Well, hey there, entrepreneurs. Welcome to 30 Days of the Canon M50. If you haven't already downloaded the free PDF guide on the first video, that's just about a minute long, make sure you go back to the beginning of the series, get that free PDF on the best settings for video for the Canon M50. But otherwise, let's jump into today's video. Now, when I initially got started on YouTube, I knew I wanted to do live streams. And I started out with my Logitech C920, and they've gone on to do like models like the C922, but these are essentially just like USB uh, 1080p cameras that you can get really phenomenal quality, and it's awesome. But when I wanted to start using stuff like my cameras, like the M50, and connect that, and use that for the live stream instead of a web camera, it let me get a whole lot of features. So today I'm gonna be showing you how to actually go through and set up your camera, the Canon M50, using my particular setup. With that, let's jump to it. So my setup is super simple when it comes to wanting to use your Canon M50 for a web camera. Now, I'll get into the seconds in just a second, but here's what you're going to need. Of course, an M50 or, you know, a camera if you have some other camera, whether it's the M3, the M6, or something like that, these settings and all of that will work for that as well. Uh, but you'll want to get this Elgato Cam Link. Yeah, it's typically like what you call like a game capture card, but this one is small. It's like a USB dongle type shape and it has an HDMI on one side, USB on the other. And what you're gonna do is plug this into the camera, get this HDMI cable, which all the links will be in the description down below, uh, as well as the PDF guide that comes with this series where you can find that. And basically it's an L-shaped adapter so that it's up and out the way in front of the screen uh, and away from the screen. And this is gonna plug right into it. And this is a super small setup. Last thing that you want is a USB extension cable. And what I mean by that, like any extension cable, it makes things longer. You wanna get the 3.0, and again, I'll have all the links in the description, but basically something to give you some distance between the camera and yourself based off of whatever lens that you're using, your laptop setup, and wherever your plugs and stuff are in the room. Just give you some breathing space and room. So you're gonna to wanna to get you a good USB uh, cable that's going to extend the signal from that Elgato game capture card to this cable, to the computer and your camera and all the good stuff. So let me show you how to do it. Okay, once you have your camera ready to go and you have your computer, first things that you're going to need is the Elgato game capture card that uh, we already talked about in the beginning. So once you have this, all you're gonna do is take the HDMI portion, plug it in, now this L-shaped part is going to go into the camera and the HDMI portion. Now, as you can see, once you plug in the HDMI, it goes away that screen. So now we wanna make sure you plug that Elgato game capture card right into the computer. So unless you need the extension cable between the uh, computer and the actual Elgato, cam link that's where this actual extra extension cord will come into play or if you just need a little bit of space this one already comes with the elgato game capture card as well so it gives you a little bit of space but not as much as this one does you give a lot more cordage if you need the extra uh, width but that's pretty much it but now i'm going to hit this start hangouts on air and initially uh, it'll default to the actual um, you know, web camera if you don't have it plugged in. Now you can see this is not a clean HDMI, HDMI out. Okay, to make sure that you get all of this stuff off so that it's easy, you can just hit the info button and it all goes away and you go from autofocus to manual focus where you're using the focus ring. Let's go into the menus and actually get there. Now, I have in the my menu settings, my display settings already there, so I can just go there and adjust whatever I need to adjust. But if you have to get there manually, you wanna to go to the wrench and you want to go over to the second menu, or is it, I'm sorry, the fourth menu, and you wanna go down to uh, one, let's go to shooting info display, screen info settings. Now I have two, four, and five available and what that's gonna do is this is the first one where you have uh, some options there. You have this one with the leveler, another one with the histogram, that one with just the autofocusing box, and then the fifth one that has all of the settings uh, just on the screen, it doesn't have the live view at all. So I have two, 
four, which is pretty much nothing. If as soon as I turn off and, and go to manual, that box goes away and that's the one that we want. And then five, use any of them that you want, leave them all checked, but I have, I use two, four and five for my specific preferences. Um, then the grid display, I have to turn that off also because that's that three by three box that's gonna give you those lines. So you wanna make sure you turn those off as well. And so once we go back into it, I wanna turn those off. So reverse display, I leave that to on. Uh, display performance, I have that power saving. Uh, it has smooth and power saving. So I just have it to set to smooth and then viewfinder display format, we're not gonna worry about that right now. And then display settings, that just says we're gonna be in manual autofocus, which we have that button right here to do. And then we go to manual display the screen instead of the viewfinder. So when we're up here, that's not flickering back and forth. Otherwise, that's all that you need to do. So once you actually hit, you know, start the broadcast, then you'll have this Google Hangouts on, on air. Uh, session that will be your basically the back end. So if we go back to uh, YouTube, then this will now be available and tell us that we're you know live now and we want to go to the live control room and that's where we're going to be able to see you know all of the chats and everything like that. It's just basically that uh, back end for YouTube and it'll be able to show you you know your stream health, is it okay and all of that that good stuff you'll be able to see this is the stream is live. So if we adjust this in real time, there is a little bit of a delay, which to my understanding was about 10 seconds when it comes to uh, YouTube. And so adjusting that focus ring, now you can start to see it starting to move. We hit the info screen, give it about 10 seconds. Uh, that's gonna adjust in just a second, but it just takes time and there is a 10 second delay. So now we're seeing uh, those settings on the Google Hangout. And then also if we go back to that Hangouts on Air, that stays up in the background, like for whatever reason, it's reverse here. But when you actually show it on YouTube, it'll be live. So let's say for example, I was showing you how to go through the camera settings and things like that. That's one way that you could actually record it or whatever. And you can see the chat over here and all of that good stuff but otherwise that's how you do it on youtube so there it is that's all it really takes to use your canon m50 as a web camera and it's super easy you just want to make sure that elgato's uh, cam link for their game capture cards that if you're going to be invested in them or any other types of brands to you know turn the camera into a web camera make sure you're checking out the settings and the requirements for your pc or for your macbook because one of the things that I found out is that my MacBook Pro is an older MacBook Pro, it's a 2013 model. So it's actually not strong enough. It doesn't have all the components that it's supposed to or the drivers or something or another that uh, they said that it requires, but it still works with my computer. So it's not saying that you won't get uh, a chance to use it, but it won't give you the optimal performance or what's required to use it. So the thing that happens with mine, somewhere about the 45, 50 minute mark, then my uh, cam link, I don't know if it just cuts off or what the real issue is, but the representative said that it doesn't have, I guess, enough computing power to, I, I guess, keep it going. I have no idea. I've had it go from two hours to just the 45 to 50 minutes. So it can do it whether or not, you know, it's, uh, you know, an optimal day or not optimal day. I have no idea of what it usually takes to make one difference or the other. So take that into consideration when you're gonna be picking this up. But otherwise, that's all it really takes.